and brought them out and said, Sons, what must I do to be saved? I want you to keep note of the words of the jailer. He uses two strong words. Number one, must. Number two, save. When the word must is used, it simply means the most important and the only requirement. No plan B, no option B, because he's asking them, Sons, what must I? What must I? Is there anything that I must do so that I can go to heaven? Is there anything that I must do so that I can see the kingdom of God? Is there anything that I must do so that I don't go to hell? The word saved. He says, what must I do to be saved? The word saved simply means being delivered from the powers of eternal damnation. Never going to hell again. You know, when we are doing our soul winning, sometimes when we ask people what they understand by the word saved, people will give you different dimensions. Others will tell you to be saved is to dress well. To be saved is to stop smoking. To be saved is to be a good person. To be saved is to pray every day. But brothers and sisters, even without referring to the scriptures, the word saved comes from the word saved. It's an action. And only a powerful personality, a powerful subject, a powerful power can save you where you are helpless. Say for example, if I was in my house, and my house was on fire, at that point in time I cannot deliver myself. I am in risk of dying. What will happen unto me? I'll begin screaming, calling for help. And whoever will come and secure me out of that trouble will be called my savior with regards to that situation. This man is asking Paul and Silas, what must I do to be saved? What is the requirement? The must requirement that I'm supposed to do so that I never go to hell. So if you are hearing me right, this is the point. This is a man who is asking a question to Paul and Silas because he does not want to go to hell because of his sins. Number one, in that question, he realizes that he's in danger of going to hell. You know when you begin to ask someone, what must I do to, to be saved? What must I do to go to heaven? It begins from you being informed that, hey, you are in danger. The probability, the chances of you going to hell are high. Any sin that you have ever committed in your life is enough to take you to hell. It's not about a big sin. It's not about a small sin. No. Any sin that you've ever committed in your life and you are still in that condition, you have not come to a point of asking Paul and Silas, what must I do to be saved? You have not come to a point of agreeing to speak to our soul winners, agreeing to speak to Pastor Paul, agreeing to look out for the truth. That sin is just enough to take Let me sit here. You will allow me to sit me here to sit here? Okay. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. What's your name? Yes. Uh, Newton. Huh? Newton. Ah. Another name. You are a scientist, something like that? <laughs> okay, fine. So Newton, my name is Pastor Paul. I come from a church known as Faithful Word Christ Baptist Church. 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 Can you tell can you it's in which location? Oh do you know New Junior Campus Academy? Kwandege? When you are at Kwandege? Behind Naivas, we have a, a, a popular school known as New Junior Campus Academy. That's where this church is. So anytime you want to visit, maybe in future, this is my number. You just use my number and you, you'll be given the directions. But what is most important is this. 
matters to do with your life after death okay because mm -hmm. you, you agreed that we are just here temporarily we are passing away isn't it mm -hmm. so do you personally go to church yes which one mm, i usually go to ours it's known as true gospel church ah no i like that wording true gospel church now let me ask you if you go to true gospel church it means that you have the truth okay something like, something like that okay so do you have the truth concerning salvation yeah so what do you think a person has to do to go to heaven hmm. what must i do or what must you people do so that they go to heaven as for me yes i shall say that if you want to go to heaven first thing you must have faith mm -hmm. second faith, faith in what you must have faith in eternal life okay mm -hmm. you must have faith after life life after death mm -hmm. you must have faith in what is ahead of you okay fine so that is about faith then besides faith what are you supposed to do again you must be this is called how can i speak in this way? yeah you can when you feel like speaking soil you can so you must be humble uh, okay all right yeah willing make sure not to repent your sins oh fine yes so we have this having faith in eternal life and then we have this being humble and then you have to repent of your sins yeah do you have anything concerning commandments do you think we have to keep the commandments to go to heaven not really so with the commandments we don't have to keep as for me yeah i usually say even jesus himself broke some commandments mm -hmm. like which one jesus in jesus teaching mm -hmm. jesus was not precise not he wanted mm -hmm. so and as i i usually see today mm -hmm. in catholic churches yes they usually worship the idols mm -hmm. They usually worship that idol of Mary, mm -hmm. and in the commandment they, are, they usually say, "Do not bow down and to any other idol. god." Mm. So but let me just cut you short. Mm. So are we talking about Catholic or Jesus breaking the command? So in the Catholics worshiping an idol, yeah. is it Jesus breaking that commandment? Let me let me yeah, explain. Ikoivi, mm. wa Catholic wanasema. Yesu wanaabudu Yesu na bado Yesu anajirifa kama Mungu juu mbinguni. Uh -huh. Na the commandment nasema do not bow down or worship any idol but me. Uh -huh. Jesus himself is not God but is the son of God uh -huh. to whom was sent to save us. Uh -huh. But yeye alisema yeye ndio Okay, now I get your point. So you feel like Jesus broke that commandment yeah. when he says he's like God. Yeah. Okay, fine. All right, I get you. So you, in your mind, you feel like we don't have to keep the commandments to go to heaven because Jesus himself broke the commandment yeah. by making himself to be God. Yeah. Okay. So you don't believe that Jesus is God? Yes. Is that the truth in your church? Does your pastor teach saying that Jesus is not God? As for me, you see, me don't usually go to our church this every Sunday. Every Sunday. Yes. But I go once once. Okay. But in in back there, mm -hmm. in Konyuma, mm -hmm. I don't know if I Sunday school. Yes. Just as I see in the Sunday school as you learn. Mm -hmm. What you think? Okay. 
what you keep, you make your mind think. Okay. Is what is ahead. So let me introduce you to a scripture here. The Bible says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So if you are a good scholar, who is the word? Jesus Christ, isn't it? Yeah. The word is Jesus Christ, right? In the beginning there was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Right? And then the Bible says what? All things were made by him, and without him was, was, was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was manifest. The life was the light of man, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehend it not. So what the scripture is speaking here is speaking about God, the Father, but also the Word. You know of what we call the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit of God. So we have one God in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit of God. How do we know that? If you look down here, in John 3.16 the Bible says, For God so loved the world, so God the Father, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So there's no way you can claim and say that Jesus broke the commandments by claiming that he is God. In fact, Jesus said he's come to fulfill the law. So Jesus is not against the commandment. I thought to say that is wrong on your part, and maybe if you are taught that, that is very wrong. In fact, it should never come out of your mouth another time, because Jesus is God, but in the place of the Son, because we have God the Holy Spirit, and then we have God the Father, whom we have never seen. So we have God the Son, whom the Bible says God manifest in the flesh. So the God that we know whom we can associate with in the flesh is Jesus. Because God the Father is a spirit and no man has ever seen him. And when Jesus wanted to go back in heaven, he said, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. Then he left us God the Holy Spirit. But yeah, you are saying he left us. He said will give us a help. Of course, yes, it's just a matter of grammar. But the thing is, you understand that as he goes, he's not going to leave us alone. He's going to give us a helper who is God, the Holy Spirit. You understand? Now, let's now come back to the business here. Because what is important is now to know whether the reasons you gave are going to take you to heaven or not. Because if I remember very well, you said you have to have faith in eternal life. Yeah. Who is eternal life? Eternal life is life without an end. So if I was to understand you rightly, it's like, okay, eternal life in itself, you just have to believe that you'll have a life without an end. Yeah. Don't you think that this life is, is in Jesus? Is it in Jesus or is without Jesus? You must have faith in Jesus first. Okay, so then you get that eternal life. Yeah. Okay, so now, you spoke of eternal life and then you spoke of keeping, uh, repenting of your sins, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, and then you spoke of what? What did? Humbleness. Humbleness. So, if the Bible is not giving you mo more than one reason to go to heaven and you have three reasons, then it means you have it wrong. This is what I'm saying. If the way to heaven is one, or the reason to go to heaven is one, and then for you you have three reasons, then it definitely means you are wrong. You understand? Because let me let me show you this. If I was to tell you that for you to come to my house, you only have to use this route. And then it's like in your understanding and saying, I can use this route to reach pastor's home. Will you reach? Uh, no. You'll not reach, isn't it? Because I'm the one who knows where my house is. And if I'm telling you that it's only one way, but then you invent other means, you'll not reach. And that also it shows that even if you know the way to my house and you have other three ways, then it means that you really don't trust in what I say, that there's only one way. Okay? So do you know what I'm saying? In the Bible, in God's Word, there's only one way or one thing to do to go to heaven. It's not three things. 
And if you, if you mentioned of having faith in the everlasting life, and if you really understood what that means, you should have not had these other two reasons. Because according to the Bible, these other two reasons that you are talking about is not part of what God wants you to do to go to heaven. And I'm going to prove to you that, okay? But let's start out by showing you this. The Bible says that we are all sinners and no one is perfect. Yeah. I am a sinner, you are a sinner. Yes. All right? If you look at Romans chapter 3, Romans chapter 3, <coughs> verses 10, the Bible says, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. So God says nobody under the, under the sun is a perfect person. The word righteous simply means perfect. All right? So why are we not perfect? If you look at verses 23, the Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So everybody is a sinner, to be precise. That's what God is saying. And according to the understanding of the Bible, the definition of, of the word sin in the Bible is breaking God's commandments. So the Bible says sin is the transgression of the law. To transgress is to break. Okay? So when God says, thou shalt not steal, and then you go stealing, you have committed sin. So anything that is called sin is coming from the understanding of breaking the commandments. Okay? Anything the Bible calls sin is associated with breaking the commandments of God. All right? For example, let me show you this. In Proverbs 24, and when we talk about commandments, I don't want you to be focused so much on what was given to Moses because the whole Bible is full of commandments. The Bible is a book of do this, don't do this, do this, don't do this. That's commandments, right? And if you look at Proverbs 24, 9, it shows you that there's a commandment that we break every day, though it's not clearly seen in the law that was given unto Moses. And the Bible says what? Proverbs 24, 9, the Bible says, the thought of foolishness is sin. What does that mean? It means anytime you're having foolish thoughts, you've committed sin. Do you understand? Yeah. So anytime you're having foolish thoughts, anytime your minds, your thoughts are not righteous in the will of God, maybe you think about, you know, stealing, you think about lying, you think about committing horrible sins, or maybe you are annoyed and you feel like if it was possible I could have killed this guy, at the end of the day, anytime your mind is processing something that is not righteous in the will of God, you have committed sin. And to be true, brother, this is something that is happening unto everyone. That's true. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Besides this, let me show you another one. If we go to uh, James chapter 4, it shows you that anytime you are doing not something that you know is good, you are breaking the commandment or you are committing sin. The Bible says, James chapter 4, verse 17, Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. You know that if I do this, it's good. But then you fail to do that which is good, you have committed sin. And to be honest, we are not always doing good things. We are human beings. Sometimes someone wants food, we have food, but we feel like I'm not going to give you. Okay, you understand? Sometimes you have two trousers and your friend is not having a good one. You know very well if it was, you know, uh, needful, you need to share one and remain with one. But then you feel like, ah, even these two trousers are not enough for me. So you let your friend walk naked, but you continue having two trousers. But humanly speaking, you are supposed to share. So when you fail to share, you have committed sin. You know what this means? It means that no matter what, even if we consider ourselves righteous and good, we are never good. That's why when we get to Romans chapter 3, 10, the Bible says, no one is righteous. Understand? Okay. Now with that in mind, you know very well, if I'm not wrong, you know very well that if you die a sinner, where are you supposed to go? Where are you supposed to go when you die as a sinner? You have to go to hell. And the Bible speaks of hell as a place of fire, eternal fire. People that are in hell will be there forever. It's not a short term, you know, a short, a short term life there. No, you are there forever. Crying and gnashing of teeth. The Bible says in Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death. What I want you to understand is that when the Bible speaks of this death here, it's not only about just the physical death because everyone will die. 
okay yeah but this is talking about the soul how do we know that if we go to revelation chapter 21 a the bible proves unto us that it is called the second death what we are seeing in romans 6 23 the wages of sin is death it is called the second death because the bible says but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and homongers and sorcerers and idolaters you spoke of those who worship idols the catholics and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone which is the second death so what happens your body dies is kept in the grave your soul goes to hell and while Seth is experiencing the fires of hell that's the second death so you first die in your flesh then your soul goes to hell what about the spirit we'll talk about that later okay the Bible says that God takes the spirit, right? So, but God knows where He places it. But that, what is important here is, to, is the issue of your flesh and the soul, because that is what goes to the soul is what goes to hell, or the soul is what goes to heaven, all right? Now, the Bible spoke of the sin of lying here. Truly, you might tell me you are not an idolater. That means you never worship idols. Yeah. That means you are not an idolater. You might not be a sorcerer. You may never have been in this, you know, issue of homongering. That means prostitution. But will you ever say that you have never lied? <laughs> He's saying that in Kawaida. <laughs> we lie, isn't it? So the Bible says, together with all these sins, even the liars, they have to go to hell. So a small sin like lying, which will look to be obvious, together with having foolish thoughts, together with failing to do what is good, Every sin is enough to take you to hell. But, even Abraham left but he was a human being. Okay? So the point, did the Bible say, did the Bible say, there's none righteous? So human beings, among human beings, no one is righteous, right? Yeah. You understand? Okay. Now that we have to go to hell because of our sins, the question would be, what then are we supposed to do so that we don't go to hell? You spoke of being humble. You spoke of repenting of our sins. You spoke of uh, having faith in eternal life. Now let me start with the point of repenting. I hope you are the one who believes that repenting means to, be, to ask for forgiveness. Yeah. You believe that? Yeah. Okay. But then look here, the Bible teaches differently. The Bible says God repented. So please help me understand. Did God commit sin? And then he repented. Did God ask anyone for forgiveness? You know, me as I see, in every in every body, there is the good part and the bad part. But the Bible does not talk, talk briefly about the bad the bad part of Jesus. But as, as you see, when Jesus was replying, re replying to me, when he teaches the parable, sometimes when he reply, even you when you try to re reply that, it sounds, it sounds like... It's bad. You're rude, you're rude. Okay, fine. So look here. I, I, it seems like in your mind you are trying to point sins on Jesus when he never committed any sin. Because look, if Jesus went into a temple and he found people doing business, okay, then he, he prepared a scourge and started beating them, throwing them outside the, the temple and said, hey, this is the house of prayer, it's the house of my father. Would you say Jesus committed sin by doing that? No, there he was right. Because you know that action would be seen by any other person that, hey, Jesus is rude. And I, I think maybe that's where your point of being humble is coming in look here being humble doesn't mean that you just enjoy uh, allow everything to happen all right so jesus let's just be clear about this jesus never committed any sin so that we move on all right yeah. that jesus never committed any sin so that we move on are we clear about that because if you still insist that jesus committed sin then how can a sinner save a sinner because it's him who died on the cross because of your sin you know i'm a sinner isn't it i cannot save you because the, the disease you have is the same disease that i have so it will be so hard to believe that jesus 
being the son of God who never sinned. In fact, Jesus was not born as a result of a seed of a man. The Bible is very clear about that. It's so hard for us to come to a point of believing that he, he committed sin. Jesus handled whoever he handled in that manner because that was what he deserved to do with regards to that situation. If it's about rebuke, he rebukes. All right? It's about forgiving, he forgives. It's about even letting the, the woman who committed adultery to go free, he lets because he's God. And it's the Pharisees who had a problem with Jesus calling himself God. And they wanted to kill him regarding that. Okay? Do you understand? Yeah. But then at the end of the day, the Pharisees are men who are in hell today for not believing him as being the son of God and the creator. Right? So when we talk about repenting and God repenting, in fact at this point in time we are talking about God the Father. Because what happens is that in Exodus 32, we see that the Israelites are coming over from the land of captivity. They come over into the wilderness and then they ask Aaron to make a molten calf for them to worship because Moses had gone to be with God on the mountain and he's not coming quickly, coming back quickly. Right? Yeah. And then they do that and God seeing that, he tells Moses, go down quickly because these people have corrupted themselves. And when Moses comes, he finds them that they have done that but God tells Moses one thing leave me alone because I want to destroy these people I want to kill them all I hope in that again you not find God being a sinner <laughs> Yeah. All right, yeah. So then what is happening? Moses comes to a point of telling God to repent. So Moses is not telling God to ask for forgiveness because God is not a sinner. Because the word repent has its meaning. If you look here, the Bible says, Wherefore, this is uh, Moses speaking unto God, Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, For mischief did he bring them out to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Moses telling God, turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people. So Moses is using two, two words here. Turn and repent. Okay? Turn from what? From the plan he has against these people. Because his plan is, I want to kill them. And then he's telling God, repent from this plan. So what is the meaning of the word repent? Change your mind. Do you see it? So what happened? Verses 14. And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. So if you get the mean, if you get the a wrong definition of any word in the Bible, you get everything wrong. So that is why you see, you begin to see that many pastors are wrong on this doctrine because they tell you you have to repent of your sins to go to heaven. They are simply telling you, turn from all your sins, which simply means stop all your sins so that you get saved. No one ever stops sinning. It is even a difficult job. If I was to give you only one hour to make sure that you are not sinning, your thoughts will have thought foolish things. In the eyes of God, you are a sinner. No one ever succeeded in stopping sins. Even if you wanted, my friend, not unless you want to appear a holier than thou unto people, inside you, you know one thing, I have sinned. All right? So God did not ask anyone for forgiveness because unto our churches and our movements and our pastors is like to repent is to cry, to repent is to ask for forgiveness, and then it has become like a music. I break, I repent. I break, I repent. But then the meaning of the word repent here should simply means turn. So if you want to turn from all your sins so that you get saved, then make sure that you are never committing sin again. It is difficult. Okay. Yeah. But let me go forward and show you the fact that even if we were to assume that to repent is to ask for forgiveness, God never said, and Jesus never said, and no true preacher in the Bible who ever preached saying that you have to repent of your sins to be saved. That has never been the gospel ever since. Let me ask a question. Okay, but fine. John the Baptist usually told people to repent their sins so that they can then come the I like your reasoning. And let me just go direct to John the Baptist. Yeah. Let's see what John the Baptist preached. Did you say he said you have to repent of your sins to be? To be? He told the sinners to repent their sins. So okay. So let's, let's, let's go and see what John the Baptist preached. That is Matthew chapter 3. The Bible says, In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. If you are a good scholar, do you see anything added here in the name of sin, repent of sin? 
So why are we misquoting John? Someone is trying to take some words to put in the mouth of John, the faithful servant of God, who is in heaven now. And John in heaven is wondering, I didn't say people should repent of their sin, but everyone in the world is like, I said so. John did not say that, because what did John say? Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Change your mind, for the kingdom of God is at hand. So between you and the scriptures, who is right and who is wrong? Mm. <laughs> but but what? Even in our in our CRE books. Okay, now if you bring <laughs> if you try to bring your Christian religion or whatever, you are not talking about the Bible. By the way, let me tell you this: CRE is not Christianity. <laughs> CRE is what? CRE is just a, a a formal way of people being religious in an educational system, but it has nothing. Do you want to tell me your CRE teacher is saved? Oh, no. Do you want to tell me all that study CRA in your class are saved? No. no. But learn, this is what you have to trust in. Don't trust in CRA, man. Because you know what? Your CRA teacher is not different from a pastor there. It's, it's, it's all fake, my friend. Because CRA teaches you this, that Joseph is the father of Jesus. The Bible never teaches that. No, look here. Your father is the one who gave seed to your mom, right? Yeah. All right? So whoever is just taking care of you can be called father, respectively. But if you were to go direct to the DNA, the man who gave seed is your father. Joseph never gave seed. If we say Joseph gave seed to Mary for Jesus to be born, we are saying Jesus was born a sinner. You understand? So, do you know what we are saying? This is what we are saying. John never said, repent of your sins. Because th that would make John a false prophet. Because John would be telling people, stop lying, stop having foolish thoughts, be good people, make sure you have no innocence. And by the way, let me ask you, brother, if we, if we have to stop our sins to be saved, what is the reason of Jesus dying? If you, if you ever go to a hospital, you want to see a doctor to treat you, and the doctor tells you, come when you are healed so that I treat you. What is the work of the doctor? <laughs> Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. And that's why Jesus told the, 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 the Pharisees that the, it's only the sick person who needs a physician. And he says he came for the sinners and not for those who are righteous. Because you know what? Jesus is the medicine for the sinners. He's the one who justifies them. All right? So, okay, fine. With John, we are clear about that. He never preached saying, repent of your sins. So what about Jesus himself? The one who is a deliverer, the one who justifies. Let's see what he preached. Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1, verses 13. Now after that John was put in prison, verse 14, now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, verse 15, and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand, mark this, repent ye and believe the gospel. Jesus never said repent of your sins. It's an additional of men and women, the devil, who try to make the way of heaven difficult for you so that you never reach heaven. Because Jesus is simply saying, change your mind and believe the gospel. Do you know what that means? If you believe that you have to keep the commandments to go to heaven, Jesus is telling you, change your mind and believe the gospel. And what is the gospel? It's death, burial, and resurrection, period. Because all matters to do with the gospel and going to heaven is all about Jesus Christ. It's not about you being a good person. And I'm going to show you that from Ma Matthew, Matthew, Matthew 7, 21, to prove unto you that, hey, we are all doomed if we have to believe that we have to repent of our sins to go to heaven. Because that's a wrong gospel. It's not biblical. No any preacher in the Bible preached that. So if you told me that you go to a true gospel church, you need to begin to see that it's not true. It's not true. The name shows that it's true, but the content inside, not true. That's why it's good to investigate every preacher and what he preaches. It's not always about hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. People can mention Jesus a hundred times, but that is not to say that they're right on the gospel. Matthew 7, 21 says what? Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. This is Jesus speaking. He says, saying, Lord, Lord, will not take you to heaven. But you're going to make sure that you are doing the will of his Father so that you go to heaven. So if you don't know the will of his Father, what is the will? What the Father wants. The will is what you want. For example, 
If I wanted my children to clean my car, that is my will. They have to do, the, to, to do so. So Jesus is telling you, singing Lord, Lord, going to church and amen, amen, hallelujah, Jesus, Jesus, will not take you to heaven. You better be wise and think to do the will of his father. Because if you don't do the will of his father, you will not go to heaven. And then he, got, he used to give us an example of people who have their own will. Thinking that the things we are doing are the things that will take us to heaven. For example, look at verse 23. says, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? So we have people who think that prophesying, preaching in the name of Jesus will take them to heaven. And then he continues to say what? And in thy name have cast out devils. Those are the deliverance pastors, deliverance ministries. Receive. Be delivered. Come for deliverance services. So here they have a reason to stand before Jesus and say, Hey, look at how we delivered demons out of people out of, from demons using your name. And others are telling him what? And in thy name done many wonderful works. Wonderful works are good works. So here we have a category of people that are saying, Look at how I helped people. Look at how I went to church. I gave offering. I never insulted people. I was a good person. And allow me to come to heaven because I did all these things in your name. And others are telling Jesus, Look at how I preach. I used to have big crusades. Every Sunday I used to hold a service. And I did all these things in your name. Allow me to come in. And others are telling Jesus, look at how we deliver demons. The people from demons. The powers of demons using your name. In the name of Jesus live. In the name of Jesus live. Jesus, can't you look at this and allow me to come in in heaven? But what is the response of Jesus unto them? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you depart from me that work iniquity. So Jesus is telling them, you did all these things in my name, but I don't know you. He's not telling them, I have forgotten you. No, he's telling them, I have never known you. So you can be sure that with people who are preaching in the name of Jesus, with people who are doing everything in the name of Jesus, with people who are doing many good things in the name of, I am a Christian in the name of Jesus, but Jesus does not know them. That is very dangerous because as a person, you got to make sure that you know what you have to do to go to heaven, which is the will of the Father. Besides that, all that you do in the name of Christianity and Jesus is useless because it won't take you to heaven. So the question would be, what is the will of his Father? Because if you know the will, you'll do it. If you don't know, you are blind. You can never board a car or a vehicle from Kakamega coming to Nairobi and the driver is blind. You'll not reach. And you can never be a pastor who don't know the way to heaven and then tell me people who are listening to you in that church will reach heaven. It's a lie. All right? That's why Jesus said, if the blind lead the blind, they shall all fall into a ditch. A blind person leading a blind person, all of them in a ditch. A ditch is hell. So what is the will of the Father? Let's go to the Bible and see what the will of the Father is. John 6.40, the Bible says what? In John 6.40, John 6.40, the Bible says, And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son, the Son is Jesus, and mark this, believeth on him, may have everlasting life, and I'll raise him up in the last day. Simple. What is the will of the Father? You see the Son, Jesus Christ, believe in him. God does not want you to be humble to go to heaven. God does not want you to keep the commandments to go to heaven. God does not want you to be a good person to go to heaven. God wants only one thing. See his son Jesus Christ and believe in him. Period. No plus, no minus. That's why I started by telling you, if it is this plus, this plus, this, it's wrong. Because here is only one reason. See my son Jesus Christ and believe in him. What is to believe? To trust. What is to trust? To have a hundred percent faith in Jesus that I don't want to, I don't need to be a good person to go to heaven. I don't need to be a pastor to go to heaven. I don't need to do good things to go to heaven. My own righteousness cannot take me to heaven. But the, the son of God is the one who can take me to heaven. And why Jesus? If you look at Romans 5.10, it tells you why Jesus is the only one but to be trusted in, on matters going to heaven. The Bible says, Romans 5.8, the Bible says, but God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Do you believe that Jesus Christ died for you? Okay. So if he died for you, he never committed any sin, but he took the penalty of your sins. You are the one who was supposed to go to hell to pay for your sins. But the Bible clearly teaches that Jesus is the one who went to hell. Do you believe Jesus went to hell? Yes. Before he resurrected, he went to hell. Yes, that's true. Before he resurrected, 
because his body was in the grave for three days and three nights and his soul was in the in hell for three days and three nights why did he go to hell a place of fire because he went to pay for you and to pay for me so because if jesus would not have gone to hell and sinners when they die they have to go to hell how would he claim that he has saved you how would he claim that he has paid the penalty of your sin so jesus who's never seen a sinner who never committed any sin is the one who did that by dying on the cross and then he went to hell to pay for your, all your sins okay so if someone has paid for a debt for you if someone has settled a debt for you do you need to pay again if I paid a debt worth a thousand bob on your behalf, and then I come and tell you, hey, hey, don't worry yourself, I've settled that. Do you need to pay? You will only pay if you don't believe that I have paid. That means if you don't have faith in me. That's why you'll pay again. But once it has been paid and you believe that it has been paid, you will not pay. So do you know what Jesus God wants? That you believe that God has paid, uh, Jesus Christ has settled the bill. You don't need to pay. You don't need to go to hell. You was only one believe in Jesus and that is why when we go to Acts chapter 16 there's a guy who's desperately in need of understanding what to do to go to heaven he then comes to a point of asking Paul and Silas what must I do to be saved Acts chapter 16 Acts chapter 16 verse 30 this is the soldier that was guarding Paul and Silas when they were in prison you remember that song we used to sing Paulo na sila waliomba so the policeman that was guarding Paul and Silas after he saw what happened unto these guys the miracle and they are free he, he was you know shaken in his mind and he came trembling the Bible says what the Bible says and the keeper of the prison awaking out of this of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open he drew out his sword and would have killed himself so he wanted to kill himself supposing that the prisoners had been fled but Paul cried with a loud voice saying do thyself no harm for we are all here then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said sirs what must i do to be saved so he's asking paul and silas what is this thing that is a must not option one two three no a must thing that i have to do so that i'm saved to be saved is to go to heaven to die and saved is to go to hell to be saved is not to dress well to be saved is not to go to church to be saved is to be secured from a place of danger anytime we say flooding the amenioko it means i was in danger than amenioko so the word saved means to be saved from to, to save someone or a person from a dangerous place so this guy is asking paul and silas what must i do so that i am saved what must i do so that i never go to hell and look at the answer and they said believe on the lord jesus christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house so they didn't tell this guy be a humble guy they did not tell this guy he keep the commandments no they just told this guy a simple uh, 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 they gave him a simple answer believe in the lord jesus christ and what is the will of the father you see the son you believe so paul and silas are not telling this guy hey because you have not committed suicide you'll go to heaven no they are just telling him a simple answer just believe and that's why john 3 16 john 3 16 the bible says what for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish to perish is to go to hell but have everlasting life you believe in jesus christ you get everlasting life what about if you don't believe you don't get everlasting life when you die you go to hell so what make what makes the difference we are all sinners we've seen us going to heaven and we have seen us going to hell what makes the difference the belief. That's why Jesus on the cross, at the center, two thieves on the right, on the left, one thief goes to heaven and one thief goes to hell. What made one go to heaven? He believed. believed. It's not about I stopped stealing. No, because a thief went to hell and a thief went to heaven. That helps you to understand we are all sinners, but other sinners are going to heaven because of believing on Jesus Christ and other sinners are going to hell because of not uh, believing on Jesus Christ. And what is the Bible saying here? He that believeth on him is not condemned. You believe on Jesus Christ, God will never condemn you. That means God will never take you to hell. But he that believeth not, in case you say, I don't want to believe, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So when does the judgment take place of whether you are going to heaven or whether you are going to hell? When does it take place? 
as we are speaking now. Because now this is the day, the day you have the gospel. If at the end of this you say, Pastor, I don't want to believe in what you have preached here. I just want to be humble. Just want to do A, B, C, D so that I go to heaven. God will judge you today. And you might live 90 years. You might live 80 years on this planet Earth. Do your business. Buy cars. Build apartments. But this is the day God judged you. So you are doing all these things wanted in hell. So nobody dies and that's when we begin to say, oh, now God can decide where I'll go. No. The moment the gospel is coming unto you, and then you say, I don't want. Judgment is passed. So that if you die at 60, shoo, hell. And if today you say, hey, I want to believe in Christ Jesus Christ, today, going forward, you are doing your things here on planet Earth, but you are a candidate of hell, uh, heaven. You are a child of God going to heaven. You know that and it's secured. Why? Because you got what is called everlasting life. But the question would be, Pastor, what if I have everlasting life and then I sin tomorrow? Number one, we understand Jesus did not tell us to stop our sins to go to heaven. He just told us we have to believe. So whether we commit sin tomorrow, that has nothing to do with us going to heaven or going to hell. Because going to heaven or going to hell is all about believing on Jesus Christ or not believing. All right? And so the question would be, then, what will happen unto me if I sin after I have believed on Jesus Christ? I want to show you what will happen unto you. Because this is what the point. You believe in Jesus Christ, you become a child of God permanently. Just the same way, aren't your parents, you are their child forever. And your mother gave birth to you once. So you were born in your family once, and you became the member of that family forever. You'll never be, you'll never, you'll never stop being a member of that family, no matter what. Even if you are to burn down the houses belonging to your parents, even if you are to do anything, you still are a member of that family, no matter what, right? That is why even our, ma our family members that are dead, we still consider them to be our member, members of our families, even in death. So do you know what that means? Once you get born again, you remain born again forever. You, Jesus saves you today, you remain saved forever because it's one time. You are born by your mother once, to be born again is once. You don't get a born again and born again and born again. No, it's just one time. That's why in John 1, 12, the Bible says what? But as many as received him, him there is Jesus, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Keep note of this. You receive Jesus, that's when you are called a son of God. So it means you can be a religious person who has never received Jesus. You are not a child of God. You are just created by God like other men. But at the end of the day, what makes you a child of God? Receiving Jesus. And how do you receive Jesus? By believing. The problem is, churches and pastors are teaching people saying, you have to give your life to Jesus. You don't have to give your life to Jesus to be saved. What do you have to do? You have to believe. Because giving your life to Jesus means you are suffering for Jesus. It is Jesus who gave his life for us. We don't need to suffer to go to heaven. We don't need to die for Jesus. No, it's Jesus who died for us. Ours is one. Believe on his name. Immediately you believe on his name. That is when you are born in the family of God. That is when you are counted as a child of God. So you are born once. What happens if you sin against God? What your parents did unto you is what God will do unto you. If you stole your parents' money, they will chastise you. That means they will beat you. They will punish you. If you did something stupid, they will rebuke you. But they will never come to a point of saying, from today you are not a member of this family. If they did so, nothing will change. The DNA, the DNA is the same. The mad people we see walking around here, they have parents, my friend. If you are to follow them, they have a home, but only that because they are mad, no one wants to identify themselves with them, but the DNA reads, this is a child of so-and-so. So do you know what that means? Even if your mother says, I am now tired of your character, leave my house, and from today, never call me your, your mom, that changes nothing. She's still your mom. And to God is the same. Born again, you become a child of God forever. In case you go sinning, you'll never stop to be a child of God. But God will chastise you, and God will rebuke you, and God will deal with you as your father dealt with you. You say, Pastor, where is the proof? Let me show you that proof. Uh, Hebrews chapter... Hebrews... Uh, <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 12. Before I, sh I show Hebrews chapter 12, I just want to prove unto you the fact that the Bible says even if we, back we get backslidden as believers after we are saved, when you die you don't go to hell, you go to heaven. What does that say? Hebrews chapter 10, verses 38, the Bible says what? 10, 38, the Bible says, Now, 
The just shall live by faith, the faith of Jesus Christ. Who are the just? Those who have been justified by Jesus Christ. So he says what? The just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, if any man go back into mistakes, this man who is just, this man who is saved, if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. God is saying, once you get saved and you are his child and then you choose to go live a sinful life, he's, he, he, he's not going to be happy with you. But then we know one thing, even though he's not going to be happy with us, we are not going to hell because we are his children. Prove, verse 39. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition. The word perdition means destruction or hell. So he's saying, we are not of them who get back. And when we die, we go to hell. We'll never go to hell. But of them that believe to the saving of the soul. So do you know what that means? I give you the gospel today. You get saved today. Once saved, always saved. You become a child of God permanently. And then you say, I'm going to heaven. But I'm not going to church. I'm not going to read the Bible. I want to drink alcohol. See, I'm going to heaven. Right. You are backslidden. You go drinking alcohol. And you die drinking alcohol. Do you know when you die, where you, where you will go? In heaven. What happens? The soul has gone to heaven because you are not of them who are backslidden who draw back unto going to hell. Why? Because you received what is called everlasting life. So, if God does not want you to die in that sin so that you go home early, what is he going to do? This is what he's going to do. He's going to punish you. Just the same way your dad and mom will take a, a rod and... He says what? And you have forgotten, this is chapter 12, verses 5, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord. So chastening is beating. So the Bible says when God is beating you, just understand that he's dealing with you because of your sin. Despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor offend when thou art rebuked of him. So God is going to be in a business with you as a child, in the business of chastisement or rebuking. So that means there are mistakes worthy being quarreled by God and there are mistakes worthy being beaten so that you feel some pain. And then he says what? For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. If God loves you, he will chastise you and scourge every son whom he receiveth. The moment God receives you as a son, he will chastise you when you do something wrong. He will punish you when you do something wrong. And then he says what? If you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. How did you become a son? By receiving Jesus Christ. So God will be dealing with you as a son when he's chastising you. For what son, keep note of this question, for what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? God is asking you a question. Which child is not bidden by the father? So God wants you to understand this. The same way your parents chastised you, it's the same way he's going to chastise you because now you are in a relationship of a father and a son. So it's the father who chastises the son. So he's saying, you should know that. But then he says this verse 8, but if you be without chastisement, the, the word without means if you miss out on chastisement. That means if you realize that you are just sinning and there's no punishment, there's no consequences. You are not feeling any pain. He says, but if you be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. So what is he saying? If you realize that no chastisement, you are just committing sin and everything is fine and you know you can fornicate, you can commit adultery and no implication of pain on you. God is not dealing with you. He's saying, just know that you never got saved. You are a bastard. You are a fake child. Because true children of God are punished anytime they go sinning. You understand? Yeah. Did you understand? Yeah. So, it's very clear now. I hope now you understand the gospel. Going to heaven is very easy. You just need to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you go sinning, you never go to hell. You receive a beating. Now, a beating can be in this form. God can cause you go blind. God can cause you go lame. Or he can cause you lose your job. He can cause you go through some hardships with one goal that you come back on the way. But if you, insist, if you insist going in that sin time and again, he will kill you so that you go home early. That's why you can die early. If God intended that you die at 70, you die at 40, you go back home. You understand? Yeah. Now I want to take this ball and take it back to your court because now what is remaining is based on your decision, not mine because I don't have a heaven. I cannot force you into this. The gospel is subject unto understanding that after you have understood and God knows that now you have understood, the choice you make is what will cause you to go to hell or cause you to go to heaven. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? 
Do you believe that he died because of your sins? Do you believe that he has the power to save you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you want him to save you now? Sure. Okay, fine. If you want him to save you now, it is very easy. Because look, you just have to ask him to save you. No drama, no going down on your knees and crying and wailing. No, you just need to do this. According to Romans chapter 10, Romans chapter 10, the Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So you need to have that faith in you that Jesus died and rose again. You understand? And if that faith is in you, it will bring you to a point of using your mouth to confess that that same Jesus is Lord. Because now you will not be having any problems of confessing that. Because the Bible teaches the fact that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Whatever is filled in your heart, that is what your mouth will speak. So if this faith that I've preached unto you is full in your heart, your mouth will have no problem confessing that Jesus is Lord. And once you confess that Jesus is Lord, that means you believe he can save you. Verse 13, the Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. At this point in time, you have no doubts that only Jesus, not my pastor, not my parents, not myself, can save me from fire of hell, only Jesus. Now that you have faith in him that he can save you, he simply wants you to do this, to call on him. To ask him and say, Jesus, please save me. And if you are ready for that, I'll help you do that. Asking him through a short prayer. But that prayer is not what is saving you. What is saving you is the faith. And that means I may not be able to know what is in your heart. God in heaven knows. Because God is the one who is going to justify you at the end of the day. You know? So are you ready for that? Yeah. Please bow down your head and repeat this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Of all my sins. Of all my sins. And give me. And give me. Eternal life. Eternal life. I believe that. I believe that. You died. You died. And rose again. And rose again. Because of my sins. Because of my sins. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For the free gift. For the free gift. Of salvation. Of salvation. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I am saved. I am saved. Amen. Amen. What's your name again? Newton. Congratulations. <laughs> as easy as that, Newton, and you go to heaven. <laughs> now you can thank God for today because we had to walk over to come and meet you here. Now you are free, you can, you, you can go to heaven, you will go to heaven when you die. Now this card is important now. Newton, if you continue going to a church that does not know the truth, you might not be effective in growing with regards to your Christian life. But what do you need? You need now to go to a church that knows the truth, whereby the pastor is going to teach you the whole Bible. So that out of what you are taught, you have knowledge, so that you can help others tomorrow, but at the same time, so that you don't sin against God willfully. People sin against God willfully because they don't know what God says in his word. And the reason why we keep God's commandments is because if your father told you to do A, B, C, D and do it in a way he wants, he blesses your life. So if your father in heaven says, hey, don't do this, don't do this, and you are given unto doing that, he will bless your life, he will change your life, and your life will be peaceful, and you will please him, and he'll give you long life, and what have you. So that's the reason why we go to church, because God wants us to be gathering every day in church, as believers now. So what happens? After I've spoken unto you now, now you are a child of God, you need to join a church. Now once you are joining that church, you are given a good Bible, a King James Bible, because other Bibles are fake. When we have time, when you come to church, we can show how fake they are. And once you have this, you come to church, the pastor preaches as you confirm the word of God, and then you begin to grow. So if that will be your mind, this is my number. This is the name of our church, Faithful Word Christ Baptist Church. This is my face here, as you can see. If you have a brother, a sister, anyone whom you know, whom we are not going to meet, but you are like, I want you people to get saved and go to heaven. Let them use their smartphones to scan this code here. It will take them to our YouTube channel, direct to the video that has the gospel which I have preached unto you today. 
So you should not be worried like, hey, pastor, you need to come and see my mom. No, let them just use this, okay? And if you need to know more details concerning our church, scan this, it'll take you to our website. If you need to know about anything to do with Christian materials, which Bible is good, which Bible is not good, scan here. So this card is important for you, just keep it, please. And anytime you want to come to church, use this number. Come to Kwandege, let me know, we'll show you where the church is, okay? God bless you so much for your time. I did promise something for, you can, you can come.